Hello, it's Crypto CJ. It's a trade of the day, Thursday night, the noon approved time, Thursday night, Zoom edition, Friday morning for me in Southeast Asia. So we've had a really good day today and yesterday. Last couple of days, Bitcoin has recovered nicely from the crash we had on Sunday and Monday. So let's go to the charts and check it out. Okay, should be seeing my Bitcoin day chart. Yes. Thank yes. you. And we're at 61.6 at the moment. We were over 62 a little while ago. So I wanted to share something that I found in the Crypto Ran email that I subscribed to. I got it late last night. And I thought this was really interesting. It's essentially sharing how resilient Bitcoin has been. So through all the, the trouble and the markets overall, and not only in crypto, but, you know, the uh, the stock markets and, and all the markets all over the world bearing down. Um, Bitcoin's now pumping over 60K. So, you know, this 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 poster on X, Michael Nadeau, I, I don't really know him, but I thought this was a nice summary. I'm not going to read it all, but he goes over Bitcoin significant corrections. And this is the one that caught my attention, all, all the dumping of Bitcoin that's happened through the German government, Mt. Gox, you know, FTX creditors, things we've talked about before, uh, the trusts from Grayscale, all this downward pressure on Bitcoin, and it's been so resilient, it's still bounced back up. I'll put this in the chat if you guys want to look at this in some more detail. And talks about the J Bank of Japan, our own U.S. Treasury, uh, Trump announcing support. That's actually a good thing, I would think. And there's essentially 10 things listed and some people, you know, chime in a few more in the comments, but I will put this in the comments of this Zoom call. And if you guys want to want to grab it, then um, look at it in more detail. You can do that. So I have to stop my share to do that. Okay, and engage the chat. So there's that link in the chat. And let's get back over to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So Bitcoin's had two out of three daily candles, big fat green ones. This time zone is still set for Arizona, USA. So that's why it probably looks pretty similar to what you guys might have. And Ethereum... Uh, broke through the 2500 barrier I had drawn quite a while ago, earlier this year. And it dipped down there briefly and then broke back up. Um, regarding my swing trades, I don't know if any guys, anybody saw, but I did a short little video yesterday about stink bids, you know, low buy orders. We talked about those from time to time on this on this Zoom call. I put one in on Bitcoin at 50,000 when it was crashing down from 62 on Sunday or Monday. And, and my... You know, my uh, entry got picked up and then my goal on the trade was to get out at 59.5 and I did. So I picked it up, you know, 19% in less than a week. So that's that's how I swing trade. Now, obviously it went beyond 59.5 up to 62, but I don't feel bad about that because I planned my trade and I traded my plan. So anyway, back to Ethereum, well above 2,500. Love to see this break back into this zone. Um, in, in three thousand for three thousand, I picked some Ethereum up to around twenty three hundred. So uh, we'll see how that uh, that swing trade does as well. And then I also picked up a near position. I was in at four fifty, and they went down to three fifty. So I did a ladder buy at that. Now it's at four. So one good thing about dips is they're they're great entries. So if you can. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is sort of the emotional part of trading. If you if you can keep it together during those times and not get too emotional, and you can view them as opportunities, you know, keep some cash on the side for these things, and then um, go ahead and jump in, you can make some pretty nice swing trades. Okay, uh, any questions or comments on the markets overall before we go to Altcoin Alert? Look for some day trades. Very well. I'm on Altcoin Alert now. I am 
I've got the easy mode off. I'm on altcoin radar. I've got all the all the columns. Do a quick reset. Get the most current information. And then the first sort I usually do is by AA score. And I'm looking for values 80 and higher. I've consistently been trading Jasmine and Didix. And Jasmine's up 13% today, 84% score. So that one I'm following. BitTorrent's an older project, not as volatile. Woo, I trade sometimes. If I got a star by it, that means that's something I, I trade. And Didix, these are the two I'm I'm trading that I have off of um, Altcoin Alert. Then I've got two more I'm following from a different information source. Let's see if those are listed here. Not yet. So got Jasmine and Didix. So let's go ahead and check out one of those. ENS and BCH are what I'm following for another source. We'll see if those show up in Altcoin Alert as well. You guys might be might be um, getting tired of looking at Jasmine, but this one has done you know, really well for me on the day trading side. And all right, please bear with me. My computer's a little slower than than it was in in the U.S. So it takes a while for some of these indicators to load sometimes. I may have to trim some to make this go faster. This is my 15 minute day trading setup. And I've got, I've got Bollinger Bands, which I really don't use that much anymore. These are the green lines that are kind of showing the range of this, um, this time frame. And the SMA line in the middle shows the middle of that range. I've got the supply and demand visible range indicator from Lex Algo. I use that for support and resistance. And then I use the RTI relative trend index for entries. I put alerts on this and this helps me get nice um, dips like something like this. If this happened you know, at nine o'clock yesterday morning in the US. So if I go ahead and bring up my vertical line. So when that breaks here, dips below the 20 and then comes back up, that's where I want to get in. And as you can see, you know, that entry went up, you know, almost 5%. That's a great day trade. On my day trades, I'm looking for 1% to 1.5% um, profit, usually at 10x leverage. Um, you shouldn't be trading leverage unless you're an experienced day trader. But uh, even even spot trades at 1.5% can, can pile up and increase your, your balance pretty quickly. If I'm trading spot, I'm probably looking for more of a 3 to 5% move. And that would have been accomplished with that particular entry. And then we have a break above the 50 over here, which is another approach I use. And that would have been another good trade. 10 p.m. on Thursday last night. And that's 4%. If you hold on, maybe take another position. And there's a 7% move. So those are great day trades. So those are examples of what happened in the past, what we're looking for now. Um, now, this move has already happened. So we're in the, we're above the 80, which is where I like to look for shorts. If, again, if you're a more experienced trader, you're trading on leverage, um, you can take a short when this breaks below the 80. Like here's an example of that right over here, broke below the 80 and then dropped, you know, 8%. So that's a, that's a great day trade. So this will be something I'll be looking for for my late week short. If this breaks below the 80. I'll seriously consider that as a, as a short entry. Now, if you're trading spot, you're not going to be that interested in shorts. So you're going to want to set an alert on the RTI. And here's how I usually do that. Right click, add an alert. Crossing up. And it's going to be the 20 on the more significant dip. Then you might want to set another alert for the 50 in case it doesn't go down that far. 
and then call it, uh, I usually call it AA score, which is my information source, notifications. I'm gonna go with notify an app on my phone, show toast notification on the screen here, then play a sound um, also on my computer and click create and you're good to go. Now I'm not gonna do that because I already have this alert. You know, that Your 50 alerts gonna look like this. Your 20 alerts gonna look like this without the 80 up here. So if you're a more experienced trader and you want to trade both directions, which is what I usually do, we're going to do the alert a little differently. Instead of the crossing, we're going to go with an entering a channel, 80 on the top, 20 on the bottom. And once per bar close, leaves it on all day until I turn it off. It's usually in the evening. I usually start my alerts around 7 or 8 in the morning and turn them off about the same time at night. And whoa. That's not what I wanted. What's it doing? That? No. A score purchase and the rest is the same. Okay, any questions on Jasmine as a day trade? All right, well, let's say you want to get a bigger, bigger move than one to four percent or so. Let's uh, look at look at Jasmine as as a swing. And shout out to Frank for showing me uh, templates so I can bounce between layouts a little easier. All right, so we've got the same indicator for supply and resistance, and then have different indicators for entry. I use Super Trend because it's alert friendly. And then I use this Trendio LSMA, which is a moving average indicator for confirmation. My ideal entry is something like this, where it goes into the buy zone. Actually, it would have looked a little different at that time. Yeah, maybe not. So, you know, that entry, that triggers here. I wait for the LSMA here. So I would get in right around, probably in this area, between 4 and 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning. And then I would look for various resistance areas to get out. So, you know, I see some resistance here at about 17%. And again, here at about 23%. Here at about 30%. And obviously the red zone begins here at 35%. I'm usually looking for 10% or so on my swing trade. So I probably would have set this area here around 0.225 for my exit. And that would have happened right about here, um, about day and a half later, 14%. It's a great swing trade, short term. A great short term swing trade, in my humble opinion. So that's how I would do that. At the moment, we're in a buy. We're about the halfway zone. We do have the Trendio LSMA has, has gone green. And to the red zone, we're at about 7%. You go a little more specifically, this uh, resistance here is just under, two, well, let's say 10%. So that would probably be my exit around 0.025, give or take. So you could put in a small position there and hold some funds back in case it dips down here to the green zone again. Another option would be to put an alert on this and just wait for the next buy alert. So right click on super trend, add an alert. You can use the direction change to change trade both directions. Uh, for a spot, you'll choose the buy and then, you know, enter the rest of these as you see fit, AA score. Uh, your notifications as you want. I usually do a different notification for, for my swing trades. I like handbell, but you do you on that one. Okay, any questions on Jasmine as a swing trade? Okay, I'll go through the next few ones a little quicker now that you've got the overall approach. So, Back to altcoin alert. That was an AA score sort. Another one I like is social activity. I'm going to match up social activity, fire and thumbs up with trading activity, fire and thumbs up. 
and see if there's one we can we can choose. Sui has been a good one. They were talking about this one earlier today. It's already up almost 40%, so it might be too late on that one. But I'm curious about that one. I think you can trade that on um, Coinbase as well, if I remember right. Uh, request Network, that's an older project. XRP has been pumping since the got the good news from the SEC, not a security. And the fine they paid was 10% of what they were, or like 5% of what they were asking to be paid. Let's look at SUI. I don't think we've looked at that one on the Zoom call before. So where can we find SUI? Look at a day trade first. One. Still loading a little slower than I would like. Come on, let's go. All right, go with Coinbase chart on the 15 minute chart. So definitely in the red zone, doesn't surprise me. So I think we'd want to pull back on this one. It has sort of leveled out at right around 85 cents. Let's see where the, I can see where support's going to be down here around 60 cents, give or take. And obviously the last time it broke, below the 20 and then broke above the both the 20 and the 50 it, it shot up like crazy so i think i would set an alert on the 50 and the 20 on this one for it to dip back down so right click here add an alert crossing up so you have one at 50 and then create a duplicate alert for 20 and you can use you can use the 20 for your ladder buy if you use that approach. You can also use the 20 for potential stop loss if it goes beyond where your, your comfort zone is. And when you're getting in at the 50, you're gonna to wanna to look at the cumulative delta to see if it supports that. Can't see it very well here, but we can see it's trending up pretty strong yesterday morning. And that's when we break over the 50 right around yesterday morning. So that would have been a go in my book. And obviously it had a big move. Okay. So that's Sui as a day trade, as a swing. Let's go over to that one. And this is where you're going to want to look at some longer time frames to get a better idea of... of where your, your resistance is going to be and probably be advised you're going to be in this trade longer. We're at the four hour resistance already. How about the eight hour? We've got some, some resistance here closer to $1. So if you got in now, want to ride that up, pick up 10% at 95 cents. And then, you know, 20% at $1, maybe just below. 99 cents would be around 17%. I like that. So that's where you can use longer time frames to, to look for those resistance areas in the past. You know, like Bryce says, price has memory and it tends to go back to where it was. On the day chart, yeah, it's well over $2 back in um, in March. So depends how long you want to stay in. I like that that 5 to 10% zone for my swing trades and so I like that uh that resistance I'm seeing on the 8-hour chart to use as a guide and when to get out.
So I, I hear it asked in the Slack group a lot, you know, where do I get out? This is how I determined that, you know, I go back in the past and look for retraces and resistance. And these, these indicators can help with that, but you can also just sort of eyeball it. If I turn this off, you know, I can see where it stops here, where it is right now, but where it could go back up here around 92 cents. And then, you know, obviously you got, it got stuck here a little bit at 96. And again here, right around a dollar, dollar five. So those are all potential exits on a swing trade on SUI. Any questions on um, SUI as a swing or a day trade? Okay. So let's go back to Altcoin Alert. And that was a social activity sort. Another one I like is long-term sentiment sort. It's kind of similar, but I use this for longer time frames. I like it for spot trades and for, for longer swings, maybe like 10 to 15%. And we've got SUI over here as well, no surprise. It's very bullish on the long-term sentiment. It's what people are talking about online and the Elder Impulse Daily, just a technical indicator. So in these match, I want to look at them some more. Neo is an older one, maybe. You might look at that one. Zcash, another older one. I'm trying to look for something I know is going to move. Solana. We like Solana. Let's um, let's look at that one. Okay, so we're going to head over here. Go to my list. Pick out Solana. And look at this as a day trade first. I do trade this one on a, on a day trade from time to time. It's not quite as volatile as, you know, Jasmine and Didex, but can be a good one. Okay, so we're waiting for the support and resistance to load, but I can tell already we're at resistance at this 162 area. Uh, we had a couple breaks above the 20 here before it took off. So this is, if I would have gotten in here, that might have gotten me out on, on my day trade, but if not, I would have dipped down here. I would have picked up another purchase and then gotten out here with uh, even more money. So that's what I like about ladder buying and on a coin that's that's moving up, when it takes those dips down, that can be some really nice entries, pile up those wins. Okay, but at the moment we're above the 80, so it's gonna be similar to the last one we did. Right click on your RTI and do, a, do an alert for both a break above the 20 and a break above the 50. I've shown that a couple of times, so I won't do, do that again, but that's how it handled that one. On a swing, we'll go over to that layout. And yeah, I think we're at the, the top of the zone on the one hour chart. So we're in a buy, the Trendio is trending up, but we're at resistance on the one hour chart. Let's look at the four. So we got some room here on the four. We got in now, you know, the red zone is here right around 12%. So I like that. Um, it's a it's a later entry than I would like. I would have rather gotten in here when the buy triggered and the LSMA triggered as well. Our entry would have been, you know, we picked up 10% before this current entry. So if you like Solana, a lot of people do. Um, like this is one I wouldn't mind trading as a spot because I wouldn't mind holding it. I mean, I hold some already, but if it went against me, no big deal. I just uh, throw it in Exodus and wait for it to come back. Probably do one, at least one additional purchase, maybe two if it goes against me and then um, see what happens. So let's say... 
like I bought this at 162 and it went down, you know, maybe 10%, get another purchase around 145, goes down another 10% or so, another one around 125. And around here at 110, I'm probably a little nervous, but, uh, you know, just hold it for a while, wait till it comes up to this 162. So in that scenario, I would sell my first position, break even, then um, my second and third positions make nice profit, and overall the position is profitable. So that's how that works. But the downside, of course, is that it could keep dropping, and you're stuck. If you're in leverage, you're liquidated. So those are things you have to keep in mind for that risk. Most people would just set a stop loss down here in the low 100s. But since I still think the market is trending up overall on a long position, I, I don't haven't used many stop losses in this uh, this run. So that's up to you as a trader to figure out. Okay, any questions on Solana as a swing trade? Well, it's almost the weekend. What do we do then? We look for a weekend short. And since the market's been pumping, it's due to retrace. No guarantees, of course, but let's uh, go back to our long-term sentiment sort and flip it. Look for something that's bearish. Chili's. I like shorting this one. One of my favorites to short is Doge. Ada. Doge, ah, disagreement. Long-term sentiment's bearish. Impulse is bullish. Let's look at Chili's. That's one I trade from time to time. We'll go over to the day trade. Choose the day trade layout. Shout out to Frank for showing me this. This template option seems to be a little faster than what we were dealing with on, on Monday night. Of course, as soon as I say that, I hit Chili's and it takes a while to load. Um, actually, loading a new coin takes about the same amount of time. It's bouncing in between the layouts that's, that's been faster. So. Come on, you can do it. Okay, Chili's 15 minute chart. Still loading the indicators. I can tell that we're towards the top of the zone on the 15 minute chart. So this is going to be good to go pretty quickly, I would think. As a short position, if you are so inclined. And this one's being a little pokey. Okay, there's the RTI. Hasn't broken the 80 yet, but I'm going to set this alert. Have an alert on the RTI. Crossing down instead of crossing up. 80 instead of 20. This is a long-term sentiment sort. And then a notification. I'll do one a little different. Go with beep beep. Click create. So when this one dips down below the 80, I'm going to be looking to short it. And that alert is here. Actually, I think I'm going to change it. I'm going to leave this on all day. I might short this more than once if it just kind of bounces around. So I'll go with once per bar close. So that'll leave it on until I turn it off tonight. And so that's how you do that on the day chart. Now on a swing, I haven't shorted many swing trades. So we are in a buy. So we don't have a good position yet. The last, the last sell signal it was about a 2% move. I would have been looking for it to hit break down here. So I'd still be in that trade theoretically. Probably would have bought another position around here somewhere. 
maybe two. Looking for this to hook down again. So if you want to short this on a swing, right click on the super trend, go with super trend sell, and then only once or once per bar close, and then you know the rest. So this was a long term sentiment sort. Yeah, that's how you do that. Okay, any questions on Chili's as our short of the weekend? Well, it's Thursday night, not the weekend yet, so you might want to leave this one on for a couple days. All right, any questions about anything that we've covered regarding altcoin alert or day trading or short-term swing trading? All right, you guys are pretty quiet today. I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up here. Um, if you're watching on this recording, I'd rather see you live, but uh, I appreciate those of you who did show up with the time change. And if you're watching on the recording, check out the opportunities in the pinned comment. They help fund the channel, and I will see you guys on Monday night. Have a good day and a good weekend. Bye-bye.